So, welcome to the championship final of the 25th annual Tips for the Business Case Competition. My name is Nico Kopa and I'm the official timekeeper for this match. At this time, we ask that you turn off all cellular telephones and other mobile devices. As a courtesy to represent us, please do not leave until both the presentation and the question and answer session are complete. Please note that recording of presentations is strictly prohibited except by competition organizers or representatives of the team. The team presenting today is from Hype One University. The presentation will last a maximum of 20 minutes. I will signal to the presenters when there are 10, 5, 3, and 1 in the lab. Team members, please nod after seeing each sign to confirm that you have seen it. You must stop when I indicate that the time is up, even if you are not finished. After the presentation, the judging panel will have 10 minutes to ask questions. I will signal to the presenters and judges when there are 5, and one minute left. Once again, you must stop when time is up, even if I'm not finished. I now invite each member of our judging panel to introduce themselves. The team will then begin the presentation. Hi guys, welcome to this uh, grand finale. Um, I'm Maxime Aragma, I'm specialized in industrial automation in real life. Um, and for this case, I'm going to be the CSR manager. Hi guys, congratulations on making it to the final. Uh, I'm Chris, I'm a former case competitor. I'm also a business economic student, and today I'm the CFO. That's the fun. Hi, congratulations. Um, I'm Jan, I'm a data scientist working for marketing research, and today I'm responsible for HR. Hi, okay, welcome to the finals. I'm Christoph, I'm working in an e commerce company in Cologne, and today I'm Dr. Ben Shen Fei, the CEO and founder of Swallow. Hello, congratulations as well. Uh, my name is Mark Sasha. We are striving to turn challenges into competitive advantages. With this quote, I would like to welcome you all uh, for our presentation. We are the Jackpot Consultants. My name is Clarissa and these are my colleagues Kim, Johanna and Alex. On this slide you can see our agenda with eight very interesting points we are going to walk you through in the next 20 minutes. And for now, it's my very pleasure to start with the first point. Why are we all here? We are here because you are facing an issue. Huawei needs to develop a more sustainable strategy for, su for your supply network. To do so, we need to engage Chinese suppliers on sustainability, or we need to figure out how we are going to do that. Moreover, we need to figure out if we are going to reinstall the sustainability tool, or are we going to create a new approach. For the internal part, I would like to uh, take a deeper look on your product. So of course we all know that Huawei is a provider for outstanding um, R&D developed products in regards to um, yeah, technical standards. Is your product rare? Yeah, for now um, we can say that it's not given really exclusively. But especially in the position of the 5G market, you are pretty outstanding for now. However, your product can be imitated by big competitors. Do we have organizational support? Yes, we have that because you are one of the major players in the tech industry. However, this big power leads to big responsibility. Therefore, you can really negotiate with your supplier and tell them what to do. So that's an outstanding situation that we're currently in. The key takeaway here would be that we are in a pretty crucial situation in regards to the good current condition, but also in regards to the not really competitive sustainability that we have right now. Yeah, talking about finance, uh, you are really a major player, so also your finance look pretty decent or pretty good. So your profit growth is over the last years by almost uh, over 190%. So there is really a good chance for you to invest now into sustainability. 
which gives you, again, a pretty positive situation. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about the external part, um, where you stand now. So yeah, politically we can say that especially China is currently in a trade war with America. So with Trump. So we do have new regulations in the Chinese market um, in regards to the uh, fields of pollution and healthcare. Economic, economically, we can say that the economic boom in China is um, currently there, so the buying power of your customers is also there. So they might pay a little bit more for sustainable products. Socially, we can say that we are having some underpaid workers in China, and also your Chinese workers are working a lot, <coughs> and a lot over time. Ecologically, we can say that we do have water and air pollutions, in China, and this uh, sadly increases also your cancer rate in China. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about your competition. I said it already, you are a major player, but as we all know, they are huge uh, players in the market as well, such as Apple and Samsung. Technologically, we can say that we do have a previous corporation and we do have an audit system which doesn't work so well in the last year so we might need to focus on that to make that a little bit better. The key takeaway from this external analysis would be that we are currently in a positive situation due to the really um, outstanding opportunity that we now have that we really can invest into that system, sustainability trend in China which is really required from the government as well. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about the supplier network that we are having for Huawei. We can say that we have different uh, types of suppliers. We have the SME1, we call it. So these are founders by uh, or founders that are returning from overseas back to China. We also have SME2. Uh, these are also founders who almost or, or mostly that's the word mostly studied um, in China and then uh, founded that domestic company. Now, maybe the best uh, part to focus on would be the SM3. So these are stated owners or venture founders by the government. So we call them red capitalists. And the key takeaway here would be that the cooperation with these guys from SM3 would be uh, perfect in line with the current politi political effort, which is um, currently um, yeah, um, being uh, or bringing it to light from the government against the poli uh, pollution situation. So that is all very positive. But let's get back to the conclusion from what I said uh, in the last minutes. So you do have a lot of strengths. You are an R&D powerhouse. You really have good products and pipeline. And you have the negotiation power with suppliers. However, the weakness is that you have a widespread of networks and it's pretty unclear maybe who to, uh, who to work with and how to work with. The opportunities in the market is really now the sustainability trend. And especially in China, it's now the chance to invest in that yeah, um, sustainability um, idea. You do have strong competition, as I said, Apple and Samsung, but maybe to focus on that sustainability might give you the advantage we are looking for. So with these words, I would like to hand over to Kim, and she will walk you through all the creative ideas we come up with to tackle your problem. Thank you very much, Clarissa. So to tackle your issue of developing a sustainable supplier network for the future, you have a few options how you can operate. The first one is called Huawei Goes, uh, Goes Europe. So this means that you're going to cut off all of your Chinese suppliers and you replace them within, uh, with suppliers from Europe. And um, of course this will mean that um, regarding to the legal restrictions which are in, Euro in the European countries, that this will support um, a sustainable supply network because they are more strict than in the um, Chinese ranking right now. But on the other hand, your uh, supply chain cannot be maintained during the time that you're shifting. And of course, the production costs will, a lot, uh, will be a lot higher, which means that you might have to raise your prices, which you will give to the consumers. The second alternative is called sustainable education. 
And this means that you're going to build uh, education teams which you are going to send to your suppliers to really make sure that your suppliers and their employees understand why sustainability is so important. And additionally to that, you can improve your audit system as you're going to move one part of it into the online area. This is a very uh, promising approach as you can ensure that it's going to be a bottom-up approach, which means that um, all of the suppliers and their employees are trying to take initiative and really come with their own ideas how they can be more sustainable. And of course, this will give you a competitive advantage as you are the first one who's really paying attention to sustainability. But on the other hand, this will require a very large manpower and maybe your um, suppliers are not willing to cooperate with you. The third alternative is called an apple a day keeps pollution away. <laughs> and this means that you're going to reinstall uh, the sustainable assessor tool, which was unfortunately not successful in the past, but you're going to do that in a cooperation with Apple, which is one of your largest competitors in the market. And this, of course, means that you're losing the possibility um, to have a competitive advantage over Apple, which is actually a really good chance. And uh, regarding the trade, uh, trade war between China and the US, you should really consider if Apple is the best choice here to set up a cooperation. So to sum that up, we have the three alternatives of Huawei was Europe, the sustainable education, and an Apple a day keeps pollution away. We evaluated all of these three alternatives by the following criteria, for example, the implementation time, the feasibility, the independence, um, yes. And as you can see, we weighted the feasibility as one of the most important ones. And especially here, we think that um, the sustainable education alternative is actually quite good um, regarding the time as well. So this is why we, uh, in the end, recommend you to go with a second alternative, sustainable education, which means again that you're going to set up an education program for, for your suppliers and their employees, and in addition to that, you're going to optimize um, your audit system. And how this will look in detail, can Johanna explain to you now? Yeah, thank you, Kim. Okay, so let's look into how you should do it. Um, as Kim mentioned, this is a bottom-up approach, so it's really about educating the suppliers and their employees about what they deserve. Treatment, not only, we're not talking about the environment here, but also about ethics and health and uh, safety issues that are currently going on in your supply chain. So um, we suggest you to do education events at your suppliers and they are a requirement for your suppliers. So they cannot say we're not letting you do that. You have to, uh, you will be able to do it there. So you really have to point out the overall positive impact of becoming sustainable. What each employee, um, that how each employee benefits from being throughout uh, sustainable. And in the future, when you have new suppliers, you really have to ev evaluate the province of origin to um, make sure that you know how much education is necessary for these future suppliers and their employees. So internally, you need a really strong education team that provides materials showing positive future outcomes if, you're, if they're changing now. Um, and also this team will be traveling to the suppliers and doing these education events. And as I said, it's a bottom-up approach, so you really need to change the mindset of all of the employees from the suppliers, otherwise this won't work. So you really have to focus on your education strategy. And as we know, uh, in China, the whole environment and also uh, health and safety issues are not the most focused yet, it's mostly about price in China, so you really have to change a society's mindset here, and that's why you need a strong approach with the education. Also, we said you're going to have to improve your audit system. You're currently in the JAG resource sharing initiative, and we recommend you to stay in there, uh, because they have a really good checklist where you can uh, focus on different areas and issues that are currently still in your supply chain. And 
uh, we suggest you to do the educational event, and then four months later you're going to the supplier and doing a surpri surprise audit. They, can, they should not be able to uh, prepare for an audit. It should be a surprise audit because, um, well, then they can prepare and you're really sure that they improve something. If the audit was unsatisfying, a supplier will get six more months to really improve things. Of course, it doesn't have to be major changes right away, but you really need to see that they improved something and that they're willing to work and making their supply chain more sustainable. They will be kicked if they did not have improved at all and then can reapply later because, of course, you are an important buyer. They need you um, to buy their things. So if you kick them, they really have pressure to improve something and then reapply and then you have to check if they're better now and if you want them as your supplier. And as Clarissa mentioned in the analysis, we suggest you to start with the state-owned SMEs because the Chinese government is also trying to improve and uh, the, uh, the sustainable issues, um, work-related issues for employees. So if you were, uh, focus on the SMEs that are state-owned at first, you might get support from the government as well that can really help you. Um, and then one big part is that you add something to that, a online feedback system for all the employees of the suppliers. Because of course pressure is high and suppliers don't, uh, employees don't want to say anything bad about their employer. But if they can do it anonymously online, they will be more willing to actually give real feedback. And that will also help you to uh, make sure that things are improving. And if this feedback from the, uh, from the employees is not, not good, um, then you also can put more pressure on the supplier. Internally, you need an audit supervisor that ensures the implementation, that makes sure things are changing, even if it's only step by step. And here it's really important to do a positive approach, because usually when we only hear negative things, we block ourselves. But to positive things, we are open. So this really is important here in communication. And then of course, you also need the IT solution for the online feedback system that the employees will be able to use. Another thing that also gets the suppliers on board for this strategy will be the benefits. And here we have an idea for you that you acquire an insurance company. Why? Because that way you can give the supplier options that their employees can benefit from attractive policies that you arrange with the insurance company that you have. And that is indirect financial support for the suppliers and also the employees see how their situation improves. Once a year, you could also give the most sustainable supplier award, including in a financial uh, bonus to a supplier that really made big changes. For promotion, as I said, you really have to change your mindset here. So you can really um, do a big marketing campaign to why it's so important to strengthen the whole Chinese society to be sustainable and transparent in any supply chain. And that can be a worldwide communication because here in uh, Germany, for example, or in the States, um, we don't see these problems that in China are a day-to-day, -day, regular basis. So if you really tell why or what you changed, you can really improve uh, the situation, then the consumers will also be willing to, be, to pay more for Huawei uh, products. So that strengthens the Huawei role to be a role model in environmental issues and in uh, safety issues as well. So a quick look at the timetable. Um, the educational event should be prepared in 2019 and then can start in 2020. And other than that, you just start the IT system, build the education team, the online feedback system. It's basically everything I just said. And um, now we're going to look into the uh, finances and Alexander is doing that. Yeah, thank you very much, Shaina. Um, I want to have a short overview here over the revenues. As you can see, the core business is growing um, pretty strong with a rate of 20% based on the previous years. Um, the additional efforts all will lead to an additional business of about 5%, uh, sorry, 7% of the core business we expect. Uh, the average product, product, average product prices should increase uh, for 10%. Uh, about 10% due to the better sustainability, and we will start in 2021 with a new revenue stream. To look at the other side, the expenses. 
Uh, you can see here that we should implement an audit system. We need an education team, um, as well as uh, the increased wa uh, wages, the marketing campaign, and also um, a uh, insurance company. We assume that um, there will be high costs for the audit system from the beginning on, and also the acquisition of the insurance company in 2020 will be pretty expensive. So you can see here from 2019 to 2022 we will uh, invest this money. When we bring that together you can see here that um, your profit loss statement uh, looks not that positive, but uh, we have to um, clarify that the investment in sustainability is not all about the profit you gain out of it, but it is uh, to gain a competitive advantage in regards to your competitors and be the first one who makes this investment to um, don't lose track on your competitors and go, uh, go as the first one. That brings me to our contingency plan. As you can see here, we uh, identified three main risks. The first one would be that the suppliers supply only to other uh, customers. We would mitigate that with uh, the contraction of other suppliers. The second one would be that consumers don't accept the higher product prices, as I already mentioned. Uh, we would mitigate that with a image campaign and more marketing. And the third uh, risk would be the pressure from the supplier management on the employee uh, on the employees that this leads to uh, an unhonest behavior from the employees and we would mitigate that with um, uh, that we would put the pressure on the supplier management. So to sum that all up, you came to us with the issue that you didn't know um, to, uh, you didn't know what to do for a more sustainable uh, supply chain. We approached it with the establishment of Huawei as the uh, sustainable te technological provider, and the solution would be that uh, uh, the solution, sorry, would be the education program. And to bring it back to the beginning, we are striving to turn challenges into competitive advantages. We think we are very confident that with our solution, you can um, reach this goal. So thank you very much for your attention. We are now open to your questions, and we're pleased to present here in the finals for you. As a CSR manager, I want to make sure that all of the companies that uh, are our suppliers are on board uh, of this plan. And you mentioned the fact that you want to start with the SMEs uh, that are, as, as we call them, red capitalists. But they are also the most reluctant to change. Um, what if we are very, very dependent on one of these companies and that they, um, that they decide not to change? Uh, should we still keep them out? And if not, what can we do to mitigate it? Yeah. Good question. Uh, thank you for that, if I may answer. So, um, they are especially following what the government wants. And for now, the government government wants to um, yeah, uh, decrease the pollution, because we really have cancer issues, we have a lot of issues in the con uh, com uh, country in regards to that. So, that goes perfectly along, and therefore they're also going uh, with our strategy as well. To follow up on that, um would you still uh, kick some of the suppliers out, even if we are reliant or dependable on them, dependent? Yeah, I'd like to answer that. So you really have to be strict with that. So of course, if you're dependent, you might have to, you usually have more than one uh, supplier for one thing. So you're never that dependent on somebody and you really have to be strict because they are also, they need you as a buyer, and that is why if you kick them out, they will be quick in changing things and reapplying to be your supplier. So you have to be strict, otherwise you can't really uh, get any changes, and then it will be the same as before. Um, <clears throat> how many people do we have to hire for the education uh, program, and what is the profile of those people? Thank you for that question. Um, so we thought about it might be um, good if you have more than just one team, so we thought about a number of 10 teams, maybe existing of 
um, three to five people each and they really have to have an expertise into how businesses can their um, business model into being more sustainable. So it must be really someone who has the knowledge and really can provide good advice to those um, businesses so they even have a chance to implement some of uh, things which are not as good as right now. So doing education events for all of our more than 1,200 suppliers is a very time and cost consuming um, action. How do you want to make sure that after these education events, um, the things that we transferred, the knowledge we transferred will also be transferred into actions? Uh, yes, thank you for this question. So of course, we, as we said, we focus on the government-owned SMEs before, so we don't have a thousand right away. And they will see how they change and improve, and that will also um, inspire the other ones. You can really communicate that. And then after four months later, after the event, you have the first audit, and then really um, you have... Uh, you have uh, solutions from the past, from past audits, and then you can compare if things have changed yet. And then you have six months later an additional audit where you really make sure that things have been taken in action. And then you will be able to check that. <laughs> I, I like the idea that we are approaching the employees of our suppliers. So how can we make sure that all of the employees of our 1,200 uh, suppliers can really access um, this tool for giving feedback on their employers. So you're talking about the online tool which you're going to implement, or if they yes, are being part the tool of for the employees, yes. Okay, um, so it's kind of, you're giving a QR code, for example, to all of these people. Because you have the payment role, you know how many people will work there, you know what you have to provide for them, then they will have their QR code or some kind of a link which they can enter um, into their mobile device, for example. And by moving it to the online part, you're making sure that their employer is not going um, to influence what they are going to put in the online system as they can do it from their home as well. So that um, I would like to go to this question as well. So um, I heard about corruption in China, so I'm not quite sure if the people are really feeling well with doing this survey. So did you consider that? Yeah, I'd like to answer that. Um, we did consider that, um, but first of all, the online part already makes it easier for them, and then you still have the audit. So even if the um, employees say everything is great, um, best employer ever, you still see when you're there and doing the audit that maybe that's not right. And then you can really talk to the management if they're putting pressure on their employees and really also tell them, we're going to kick you if you're not changing things. We know that you're not really changing them. Thank you very much. Um, regarding the, um, the scalability of the audit, um, as you realize in the information we gave you, we have a problem of scale, uh, scaling up the, the number of, of audits that we want to do. Uh, how does your plan address that exactly? Because that's really major for us. Um, could you rephrase the question? Um, so basically, we, we, I mean, audit is a very time consuming mm -hmm. uh, thing to do, and that's something that we need to scale up. We need to do more audits to make sure that they all comply. Um, and in your plan, I don't see how you scale up the number of audits that we need to do and how you make it more efficient and easier for us. Um, yes, yeah, so, so far you've been doing three or four audits until things happened or didn't happen. So with that solution that we uh, suggested you, you will see changes earlier and then you can do um, what, like they don't have to be as close together anymore, so you technically have less if you see it in a total, and then you will be, will be able to manage more audits where necessary, and you have other um, suppliers where you can have less audits in a certain amount of time. Uh, could you go to the investment sheet? Um, my first question was, um, would, yeah, the next one please. Um, would this be in, um, millions or billions, so or trillions. So, what could you give me the exact amount of investment we need? Because I was a little bit uh, confused. So th this number uh, you see here is um, in U.S. millions. That's okay. so the total amount would be. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Twenty but... trillion. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Um, well. 
then I do have another question. Um, yeah, as a CFO, I'm a little bit sad that we won't make any money. However, uh, I do also care about the environment. Um, so could you give me any numbers uh, on performance outcome uh, for education or saved uh, labor or anything like that? But, uh, I mean, for the environment or labor. So what would be the performance on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I see that uh, you're probably not happy about uh, the numbers I, talked, uh, I just talked about. Um, but as I said, um, the uh, investment you, uh, you do is not just about the environment, it is more about um, being a first mover. We want I, to I know, sorry to interrupt, but what would be the result on that? The result? Uh, the result on the investment into sustainability. Uh, the result on the number of COT2 we're not putting in the air, the result on our labor, the result on the things we care for by the, doing this plan. So the, the, the CO2 which we save? No. Everything consisting in this plan. Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry but um, I cannot answer this question. That's fine. I think if I may answer, I think it's super hard to measure CO2 reduction or um, decreasing cancer rates. I mean we just have to see um, what will happen in the future and just make the start now because we don't have any more time to wait to start to be more sustainable. So you said you want to make surprise audits after four months. If you announce that, it's not a surprise anymore. Um, but more importantly, if you uh, come to the sites of the suppliers um, unannounced, they will not be able to pro uh, prepare all the relevant information. And as you saw in the checklist, there are dozens and hundreds of documents that need to be provided before. So they might not be on hand when you show up at the suppliers. Um, can you explain um, how you want to get any benefit from showing up um, unannounced? Yes, thank you. Um, so the really important thing about that is that they can't make anything look better than it is. So you really can walk through the plant, look at things, and you see if things are going on right. And then of course you can give them an amount of time, like a week, until they prepare certain uh, information and documentation that you need. But you still, they will be able to answer questions and by talking to the people uh, at the site you will notice if they're um, on track of the things or if they're trying to hide something from you. Um, as I understand it, it's kind of a characteristic approach. So there's punishment, but is there also a, something that motivates the suppliers to change? Um, yes, their image will be also impacted. They also have uh, happier employees, less sick days, so they also can more work more efficiently. And then, of course, you have the whole thing that the view on China changes because China, as a, as a country, will be. I'm sorry, that's about to.